Hello and welcome to the Neo News Today podcast. I'm your host, Dylan of Neo News Today. In episode 59 of the NNT pod, I sat down and spoke with Jason Tezanos and Mario Lopez, the founders of Humswap, a DeFi and NFT trading platform. Humswap won the Excellence Award in the recent Neo Frontier Launchpad and will be receiving incubation support from Neo Global Development. In this episode, Mario, Jason, and I talked about their backgrounds in blockchain and at PayPal, when they first came across Neo, their inspiration to build Humswap, adding more utility to NFTs, their developer experience with the tooling and features of Neo N3, and so much more. So I hope you enjoy listening to this conversation with Jason and Mario as much as I enjoyed having it. So thank you guys very much for taking the time out of your day to join the Neo News Today podcast. Today, we're talking with Jason Tizanos and Mario Lopez of the Humswap project. How are you guys doing today? Doing well, doing good, excited about what what's going on in Neo and the fact that we get the opportunity to work with them, you know, and be part of the great things they're doing. Yeah, we're, we're doing great. We're very happy to be here. We've really enjoyed our time working on Neo and, and building what we've already built. We very much look forward to the future as well. Yeah, the platform looks awesome. But before we kind of start talking about that, you guys are both based out of California and you have an interesting professional background. So maybe you guys could just share a little bit about your academic and professional backgrounds for the Neo News Today and the Neo community. Yeah, sure. I guess I'll start with that, Mario. So I've been really developing in some fashion for quite a while. I, I started C++, did a bunch of action script, always have loved games and front-end development. I've worked on Ethereum, but I think really professionally the last eight to 10 years, I've been a mobile developer. I've done a lot of iOS. I'm primarily an iOS engineer. I've done some Android, but primarily iOS. Uh, I really love the device and what it's capable of. I'm a PayPal engineer, so I work at PayPal. It's, it's really it's something I've, I've been involved with for a while, just various facets of engineering. And, and, and now I'm working on Neo. It's really fun. Love the, the stack. And yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, I recently graduated college uh, back in December. Off the bat, um, started working at PayPal. Before that, though, I did have a few, uh, some experience um, in an engineering background. I led a couple teams to Africa, um, two years, um, and we were working on trying to bring an EMR system to the country of Namibia that would be free and paid for. And so that really gave me experience because, you know, once you're thrown into the deep end of leading, you just start trying to figure out how certain things work and stack overflow is your life, right? And so really, really enjoyed that. That really gave me a lot of experience and then worked for my school as a iOS and web dev engineer and brought some really cool products. So from there, I um, really learned a, a, a ton, you know, learned a, a good of, amount of like industry practices using GitHub, using Jira, all those different things that, that help a lot. And so from there, joined PayPal as an intern and looks like they like me enough. And now I work there. Cool. Could you just share with me what EMR stands for? So EMR stands for an electronic medical record system. So over there, they don't, they didn't really have anything like that. So we were just working on that. So you guys came into the Neo ecosystem through the Launchpad event, which is awesome. I remember when we were talking about planning the, the Launchpad, how we were hoping we would attract brilliant minds such as yours. So could you share with me a little bit about how you stumbled on Neo, and maybe if you'd learned about Neo a few years ago, what was it about the launch pad that finally brought you into the ecosystem? I, I think I I, uh, I talked with Mario to get Mario onto the launch pad, but I have I've known about Neo for a long time. So my brother told me about Neo when it was AntShares. So before the rebrand and at that time period, you know, the rebrand was really exciting. It was like it was coming up, and that's when I really got into it. And I always wanted to develop on Neo, really, even since back then. But I think it was more of like waiting for the platform and, and so on and so forth. But fast forward to 
little bit forward, and N3 is coming along. I see the launch pad. I'm like, hey, Mario, there's something going on here. Let's take a look. There's a launch pad. What do you think? So, you know, I, I ask Mario, and then I'm like, hey, Mario, what do you, you know, let's do it. So, yeah, what happens after that, Mario, when I, when I told you that? He told me um, I was already dabbling in some crypto, you know, starting to do some trading on my own. And I was telling Jason, hey, let's check out these all these different ones. And then I've always wanted to do some something with blockchain. So when Jason brought this opportunity, I was like, okay, heck yeah, let's do it. Because it's an opportunity to just get thrown into the deep end in a way, right? And so that's the best way I've I've learned that I learned. And so, um, yeah, I was, I was pumped. I was excited because this is technology that's, that's changing a lot of things. You know, I hear, you know, blockchain is being used in hospitals and different things. And it's pretty, pretty cool to be at the forefront of it and to start working on it. So to not take this opportunity, I saw would be a missed opportunity, right? So. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. I mean, blockchain right now is kind of this, in this like cloudy area where we, we know it's important, but we don't know how it's going to be changing our lives in 20 years, kind of like what the internet was like in the 90s. Like people knew that connecting others and sharing information was important, but like I had no idea I'd be watching Netflix on my cell phone 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah. It's so insane. Like even if we see the progress that we've made in the past 10 years, you know, how the iPhone has changed. Now imagine technology like blockchain, right? That's so, so much. It's way more global than just your typical iPhone, right? And so it's pretty, pretty rad what's going on, you know? Certainly. And so the HumSwap project you guys worked on is and are working on, we'll get to that in a, in a little bit about steps moving forward. But you guys integrated kind of two, there are hot topics right now, but NFTs and DeFi are something that are going to be changing the landscape in the future. You know, like decentralized finance is going to be helping bank the unbanked and giving them opportunity to access markets that traditional financial institutions didn't allow people to access before. And NFTs today are just kind of seen as like this way to sell pixelated images for a lot of money. But there's a big opportunity in storing the deeds to our cars or the titles to our homes or owning my own university certificate through blockchain, through NFT-like things. So HumSwap is integrating both DeFi and NFTs. So maybe you guys could just tell us a little bit about what HumSwap is and maybe what the inspiration was to build the project. Yeah, yeah. I think initially we really wanted to do a DeFi project, just a straight DeFi you know, and, and things that encompass that realm. So we've already knew, known a lot about other projects, you know, Pancake Swap, Sushi Swap, Uniswap, all of these. And we were familiar with how their contracts work too, from an Ethereum point of view or, or whatever stack they're on. So that was really the idea. We wanted to do that. But then while we were working on that, working with designers and just front end and collaborating, we had an idea just about, NFT integrations. Like what happens if we gave NFTs a purpose just besides for being an NFT? Like what happens if they can have a use actually in our DeFi product? So then we kind of were just like, whoa, that, that sounds really cool. That's kind of really cool. Because it is like, it's the NFT. Like we, we get the art, we get everything that it is, but it also has something else. So one of the taglines you could see is like NFTs with a purpose, like what we might have used. So that's kind of really where it went. And then from there, we just ran with it and started just working on the contracts. It's a big scope for the project, you know, to have those two combined. But that's our goal. That's what we're pushing forward is, is this. And I think it's something unique. And I think we have an interesting idea to really bring to Neo. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. There are going to be games on the platform and uh, users will be able to toss PETA and hopefully uh, receive a, a one out of 100 NFT in the hummus. But before we kind of like dig into the product, I just kind of want to hear what your thoughts are on like the general overall market. What has and hasn't worked on NFT DeFi oriented platforms on other blockchains? What opportunities do you see for this type of platform, not only in the NEO ecosystem, but maybe just Broadly, I know Mario probably has a lot of interesting to say on this. I'll, I'll start really briefly, just give Mario some time with it. But 
Mario alluded to where we are at, you know, timeline wise. I, I think everything is really still very early. Even if you look at Ethereum, you know, the driving force for smart contracts, look at the fee structure and how fees are swinging back and forth. Look at the delay or, or at least how long it takes to finalize your transaction. We're early, you know, so I think opportunities. You kind of see, at least from my eyes, I see it as like, it's the Wild West. We're in the Wild West days. Like we're early and we're able to do a lot and we're able to influence a lot. So you might as well come out swinging, build the best, like to really drive for the best. And that's really what our goal is. It's like we see this in NEO as well, like wide open. Like There's a lot of opportunity there. And just the power of the platform, I think is not understood yet. And I think that just makes it even more intriguing from a developer point of view. Yeah, I think um, one of the things that I've noticed is that it's something that I know we want to incorporate is just making it more of a platform, you know? So Uniswap, PancakeSwap, and all these swaps, um, they, they do some pretty great stuff. They, they put in some amazing work and it's pretty, pretty beautiful, you know, when you look at their websites and the different things that they can do. It's pretty awesome. But one thing is, all right, we have this up and coming technology, NFTs, which the world is just getting a taste of, you know, and why not incorporate that and really take advantage of it and make it not just, okay, it's just DeFi or it's just NFTs. Why not take advantage of it and make it something more powerful where people can do NFTs, you know, where people can sell their own NFTs, where we can sell our own NFTs. And at the same, in the same spot, they don't have to go to another website, right? They can just, in that same website, they can do all these different, different DeFi functionality. And so I think that's what we saw that was lacking in the industry. And I think PancakeSwap does a bit of, I think they're called collectibles or stuff like that. But for us, it's front and center. Let's make sure the user knows, the customer knows who the moment they go on the website. Yes, you can do this. And yes, we're going to make it fun. That's another aspect of it. We want it to be fun. <laughs> Hence the name Hum Swap. You know, it came from hummus. And so the reason we did it is because what's the most like interesting food item well, that comes to mind? And I think one that will make you think is hummus. You know, it's, it's such an interesting name, first of all. And then the taste, there's none other, you know. That was the idea be behind HumpSwap and that's the idea that we want to drive it. Let's make it fun, but let's also make it usable. Yeah, I mean, it's really cool how you guys are integrating NFTs to kind of offer multipliers for liquidity pool providers or maybe people who participate in the platform. So maybe you could just share a little bit about, let's talk about an example through PETA Toss. What is this, what is this game or activity and how can somebody who maybe wins the, the hummus, how does this benefit them? The pita toss is really kind of, it, when you look at carnival games, it's, it, we're, we were looking at that idea, like, uh, let's just bring some type of small, fun little games like you would have at a carnival. So maybe you toss a pita, we would, then that, you know, falls in line with our branding. So, you know, eventually we'll have animations and, and more interactivity with it. But right now, let's say you, in order to toss a pita, you send 0.1 gas, something small. But every toss, it's the same as like throwing a dart and trying to hit a balloon. Like you're going to, at the end of the day, when you threw your three darts or whatever you threw, you won something. You won either some little thing or you really got it. And you won some giant bear or just really some huge stuffed animal. So that's the idea. Okay, you can win some more common NFT or maybe you hit like you hit it big, you hit it out of the ballpark, you get some really awesome rare NFT. So if we step through that and you win the really rare NFT, let's say that rare NFT just gives you like a 2x multiplier if you were to be providing liquidity to a liquidity pool, like a multiplier on, on what you would earn. So in that case, there's a lot of different ways we can tackle it from a technical point of view. Like how do we know you own the NFT? There's just a lot of different ways. But Assuming, okay, we have that solved, we know you own the NFT, we know you've provided liquidity, we can just multiply it based on what your holding is. And I think that's what's really awesome, right? So it, it, it also gives more incentive for you to participate. So, I mean, you have the NFT, it is an NFT, but now it can do something else that you might want to participate with. And it's all easily achievable for us, on the, like all on the blockchain. And that's what I think is really awesome. Yeah, I'm curious to hear, did you guys develop your own random number generator for the pita and the hummus when you're doing the, the pita toss? And if you 
did develop your own random number generator. Are you aware that in RC4, there's going to be a new, a get new random number syscall? Uh, in RC4, I was not aware of this. So for us, I, I think we asked the devs, like, what, what is giving us the, the most randomness of like on chain? And, and I think this is a whole other massive topic we could even talk about with, with Ethereum. I know on Ethereum, I was using oracles to achieve this. But I think with Neo, with single block finality, you can get more of a pseudo random number that is less inclined to be compromised. So they kind of told us, you know, it's just grab some something in the block headers, you know, do some nonsing, like bit shifting, and here we go. We got a random number. <laughs> so it was really the Neo devs that helped us. But good question on that. Yeah, I didn't know about RC4. I'll have to really use that one. Yeah, I had to... That, that little tidbit was given to me by the Neo News Today expert on all things in the weeds, Edge, DLT, that you might know on Reddit or... Yes. <laughs> So that was that was an edge question. One of the things that I think is really cool about HumSwap is that there's going to be the opportunity for liquidity pools. And currently, the only DeFi application in the Neo ecosystem is Flamingo Finance, which is awesome. I've been using it since it launched in September. But one thing I've always thought was missing from that particular platform was the ability for users to provide their own liquidity pools. So is there going to be an opportunity on HumSwap similar to... Uniswap, where users can provide their own LPs as long as they put their collateral up? That has always been the goal. And, and if you read on our GitHub documentation, that is even the goal for our NFT projects, our NFT products. So uh, like the auctioning, the purchasing contracts, open protocols, if you want to auction something, you can auction it and maybe your own front end interface can, can tie into that contract as well. So that is ultimately the goal with our DeFi products as well, allowing for that functionality. And do you have any uh, idea for what the first LPs will be? That's a good question. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I have any idea. Um, maybe that would depend on who is providing it, maybe? If, if we're providing, I'm, I'm assuming it would just be some standard Neo to gas, or I, it could even be NFTs, you know, to be honest, which could be interesting. We've thought about how to tie in Net 11s into this, which would kind of make it cool. It's kind of a one-to-many type of situation. So it might just end up making more sense from a purchase contract. But it could be cool if it's done from a singular smart contract, which is just another interesting technical side note. Yeah, very cool. And so I'm kind of curious because for the past few years, basically since N3 was announced in 2019... The message that's been hammered home is Neo is going to be the number one platform for developers. So I would like to hear from both of you what your experiences were like working on a blockchain that has support for native oracles and native distributed storage. And also maybe just like what was the tooling like? How does it compare to other blockchain ecosystems? So I guess I'll start with the at least the smart contract side. So I used Visual Studio Code and all of the tooling that came with that. And also Neo CLI. The tooling is amazing. Even at this stage where it was rapidly moving from a development point on that side of things, it was really smooth. From the contracts, the compiling, the, the deployments, all of it was really smooth. And I was really impressed coming from Ethereum. I've done a lot of Ethereum work. There were a lot of things in what I worked on for this launch pad that were a lot smoother than the Ethereum ecosystem. And I think probably because the developers were looking at Ethereum and other projects, well, what can we improve on? I think there, obviously, as things are in development, there were some, some things you have to bounce around, which is why I moved to Neo CLI to do some modifications of the contracts on testnet. But that was all just its movement of, of the pieces. Like at the end of the day, the, the tooling was amazing for just the building, compiling and, and distributing, deploying of the smart contracts. Yeah, Jason is the contract wizard. So I leave all that contract stuff to him. He's amazing at it. On my side, I was focused more on the website of it. So making all the connections to the blockchain, working with Neo line and all that stuff. So the tooling provided on that area, like Neon.js, working um, with uh, Neo, Neo Line's own APIs, they, they were good. So they're solid. 
The only thing is, obviously, I think they're still developing and working on it. So documentation there, we we actually got the opportunity to help them out with a bit of doc- documentation, just a little bit, you know. And so it's 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 getting there, and it's good though. Um, once the the you get the code right and everything, it's consistent, and so that's really what matters at the end of the day, right? Once you can get it working and it it's reliable. So on the tooling side on our and on the website, it was good. It's reliable, just documentation. It's still in development. And so we're just working through that, right? It sounds like you might have had uh, maybe a little bit more of a role in the front end. And the design for HomeSwap is freaking awesome. It looks great. So maybe I just want to pull your ear on why was design so important to your team? Design was, it's the biggest selling point, right? So when you go to a website, you want to have an experience. Well, this is cool. You know, this is different, especially for hackathon, right? So a hackathon, you usually don't expect the greatest designs. It's just because you're so focused on the actual functionality of the product, right? Because you have so little time. Design's not at the forefront, which I think that's that's reasonable, right? But since we're able to spread out the work, I was like, my thought process, all right, I'm going to try and make this look the best possible to try and really make it an experience, right? It's not just somewhere where I go and do stuff, but I wanted to actually I want to actually enjoy it as a user, the experience, that it's easy, that it's reliable, that it works. And so that was the driving factor, right? We want at the end of the day, we want to be a place where people want to be. And so why not start now and show kind of our vision to really start pitching our product to people. Yeah, I know at Neo News today, we were excited about a lot of the projects that came out of the hackathon, equally excited about HumSwap. And I think uh, some congratulations are in order because at, at least you're the first team that I've heard of. I'm sure there are other talks going on right now, but you're going to be moving forward with some incubation support from Neo Global Development, which is awesome. So I guess maybe sort of wrapping up a little bit, now that you're going to be incubated, what are some of the next steps for building out HumSwap? And maybe you could even share a little bit more information about what NGD is excited about you guys building out. Yeah, I think one of the main things we want to get to is DeFi, right? But before that, we we want to create a user base and we want NFTs to really be also part of our platform because NFTs plus DeFi. So right now, our next steps is really building out the different functionality we have with NFT auctions, marketplace and all that stuff to start getting users to use something right away. Right. And then the next steps would be to dive in more into DeFi where we can actually have swapping, liquidity pools, staking and all this this stuff. So that's what they're excited about. They're excited for both. And we're equally as excited. And so to have Neo just have that support and that excitement, you know, it pumps you up as a developer, you know, yeah, I want to get this done because these people believe in me, you know. And so, um, yeah, those are kind of the next steps. Focus on NFTs, get NFTs, and then move on to DeFi. Yeah, I think we really highlight our roadmap. The roadmap is is very brief, um, but it has some target points for uh, what we plan in the future. There is one really interesting thing that we're also working on with designers, and that is something similar to CryptoPunks or Solarians. Like We're working on the generative NFT aspect as well, which we're really excited for. It's not on our roadmap, but I think it's going to be awesome. There's, you can see we have a pixelated character design on our website, one of the pages, but that's just another thing that's not on our roadmap that is also in development that we're really excited for. Yeah, I, I kind of want to bring that up because it's, it's, it's a fun, fun thing. So when, when you're talking about that, are you talking about sort of like how the crypto punks are made where they're like randomly generated 8-bit or 16-bit images? Yeah, exactly. So they're, they're going to be randomly generated and the attributes are going to be randomly generated as well. So if there's a multiplier for that particular NFT, it would be randomly generated. Very cool. This is kind of like a blossoming field in the Neo ecosystem. We have like other projects that are working on NFTs as well. There's a platform, Ghost Market, that's been working on NFTs. So have you had the chance to speak with other Neo ecosystem NFT-based projects yet? Are you open to those conversations? What does that look like moving forward? Yeah, um, I think that's one of the things we we definitely want to do, right? To work with others and partner with others. So it's been in our conversations between Jason and I, it's it's definitely something we're looking forward to, to reaching out and starting those conversations with other teams and other projects. Yeah, I think that's just 
very important to do that. There's a lot of interesting collaborations. We have spoken with O3 for them adding us as a swap provider. I think they have a protocol that integrates various swaps and they're very much interested in that as well, like integrating us into their functionality. So that will be another additional thing in the future. I think other projects that we saw from the launch pad, like RentFuse, would be very interesting to collaborate with because our NFTs would fit extremely well into that rentable idea because you could rent it and and now you're renting this NFT and it's giving you a multiplier and liquidity pool. So that could be a very cool integration as well. Awesome. And final question wrapping up, it was the two of you who made this awesome project. And now with a little bit of support from NGD, are you planning on growing the team, bringing on some artists, uh, some new developers? What are kind of like the next steps for the HumSwap team? Yeah, I, I think we've been working with designers at a contract level. So we're going to maintain that, that relationship or those relationships, the contract for design. Um, but right now we're a two-man team. And, and as it stands today, we're going to be a two-man team until we really need to expand. Very cool. Well, I can say that I'm really excited to see that you guys won one of the awards from the hackathon. It's incredibly exciting to hear that NGD is supporting you. I know a lot of just general NEO community members are quite excited about your project and other projects that have come out of the launch pad. So I think uh, when you guys do make a big social media push, you'll have a few fans right off the bat. I want to wish you the best of luck moving forward. And thank you guys for taking the time out of your day to come join the NEO News Today podcast and introduce yourself to the NEO ecosystem. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Dylan. It's been a pleasure and we're excited. We're, we're really excited to see what, what we're going to do and what we can do together at, in the NEO ecosystem. Yeah, thank you so much. It, we had a great time. Great mm -hmm. time today and, and we're going to keep hacking at it. Awesome. Well, we look forward to having you guys come back on the NEO News Today podcast. Thank you. Likewise. Cheers. Thank you. Well, what did you think of that conversation? It was really cool to hear about Jason and Mario's backgrounds and how the Neo Frontier Launchpad brought them to the Neo ecosystem. It was also great to learn more about their philosophy of integrating NFTs into DeFi and giving those NFTs a purpose beyond aesthetics. And it was also awesome to hear their excitement for collaborating with other ecosystem projects, as well as receiving incubation support from Neo Global Development. To keep up to date with the latest in the Neo ecosystem, visit www.neonewstoday.com. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to our channels on YouTube, Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, and or Spotify and leave a five-star review if you feel that others should hear our content. Every subscription and review helps others learn more about the Neo News Today podcast and the Neo ecosystem. So thank you so much for taking the time to listen to the Neo News Today podcast, and we look forward to catching you next time. <laughs>